So this is happening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to the channel. My name is Tauslif Trevelyan, and this is episode 3 of Codex Emporium. Codex Emporium is a show where we talk about various historical and mythological topics. In the first episode of Codex Emporium, I talked about the origin of the devil according to Islam, and how in Islam, the devil is actually a jinn who is mentioned in the Quran by the name Iblis. And today is going to be part two of Jinn Explained. So according to Arabic folklore, there are actually various species or various types of jinn. So today we're going to be covering nine types or species of jinn. At number nine, we have the ghoul. In various Hollywood movies and video games and TV shows, ghouls are depicted as flesh-eating monsters. Wait, hear that? I hear it. I smell it. Ghouls. And these ghouls actually originate from Arabic mythology. And what these creatures are is that they are a lesser type of corpse-eating jinn. They usually roam around in graveyards and deserts and any type of filthy places that you can come across. And usually they eat dead corpses, but they don't hesitate to attack a living creature or human if they get a chance. Ghouls can also shapeshift and they take the forms of beautiful women to lure men and later eat them. And speaking of turning into beautiful women, at number 8 we have the Salat. The Salat is another type of jinn that likes to turn itself into beautiful women to trick human men. They are usually extremely cunning and intelligent, sentient creatures. It is said that they can also mate with humans and procreate with them and give birth to half-human, half-jinn hybrids. And they remind me very much of the succubus from Christian folklore. Now at number seven, a jinn called the Palis. Palis is a vampiric foot licker. And these types of jinn like to suck the blood by licking the feet of humans and animals when they sleep. They usually live in deserts and marshes and swamps. They would wait for travelers to pass by and whenever a traveler decides to take a nap in these places, that's when these jinn try to lick their feet. These are also another lesser type of jinn and are not very intelligent and can easily be tricked. And, you know, at this point, I feel like Quentin Tarantino could just be secretly a palace jinn because, you know, Tarantino in his movies... Okay, moving on. Okay, so anyways, at number six, we have the Sheik. So th the Sheik is a mischievous, small, half-formed jinn creature. They are usually very mischievous. And to me, they resemble kind of uh, like the goblins or gnomes from European folklore somewhat. Because they're all very small, like a hobbit or a gnome. They go around messing with people and... And they take forms of either half animal, half human, or small type of animals. So yeah, very mischievous. At number five, we have the offspring of the sheik, Nasnas. Nasnas are the hybrid offspring of a sheik and a human. So these are kind of like the halflings. So actually, the sheik can mate and procreate with humans and give birth to these halflings. And these nasnas, they are very extremely weird, one-eyed, one-legged, peculiar-looking creatures that I never want to meet. So at number four, we have the john. 
So the John are huge jinns who dwell in the deserts. They are often said to communicate and help humans in various ways. Whenever there's a fight, a battle among humans in the desert, and if the John appears to favor one side over the other, so depending on the side that the John favors, that side will come out victorious. And the John are also said to help the Prophet of Islam, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, in many of his battles as well. Now at number three, we have the Ifrit. So the Ifrit are extremely powerful, extremely intelligent, fiery, hellish-looking, demonic jinn, are extremely, extremely powerful, and they inhabit ancient ruins of Arabia and Egypt. And these Ifrit like to cover themselves with smoke and fire. So the smoke will start to come out from the ground and soon there will be fire and from that fire they will appear. It is said that they have huge wings and bleed fire. And even though all jinns have free will, there are many mischievous and evil jinn among the Ifrit and you don't want to mess with them. These jinns were also mentioned once in the Quran where one of these Ifrit retrieved the throne of the Queen of Sheba for King Solomon, peace be upon him. So at number two, we have the Marid. So the Marid are the classical pop culture wish-granting genies. They are probably the most powerful of all the jinns, and they're usually very, very huge. The word Marid in modern-day Arabic literally refers to giants. So these are obviously very huge, very powerful, and the jinn in the story of Aladdin is said to be a marid as well. So these are the types of jinn that are most likely to grant wishes, but for them to grant wishes, you have to first perform some sort of task. So you have to somehow please the jinn by doing some kind of task, like if, for example, in the story of Aladdin, he frees the jinn from the lamp, and, and because of this, the jinn offered to grant him three wishes in return. So just like that, you need to first come to his assistance, first need to help or work for him. Some people do various tasks, many people worship them to gain their favor, or sometimes all it takes is just a little bit of flattery. So finally, at number one, we have the shaitan. The shaitan, or Satan, is the jinn that I talked about in my previous video, the origin of the devil. So basically in Islam, the devil is a jinn who goes by the name Iblis. And he is referred to as Shaitan in the Quran. So the Shaitan is practically the devil who whispers evil thoughts into the hearts and minds of humans and other jinn. And it is said that Iblis has his own horde of followers of jinn who follow him. And those are called the Shayateen, which is the plural of Shaitan. And even though jinn are known to have free will, almost all the Shayateen are evil. So here we are, the nine different types of jinn. Tell me what do you think about this video, comment me what kind of jinn did you find the most fascinating and I know this video was very very late and some of you already know that my PC was broken so I had to repair my computer. My PC still has some issues, at least now I can record and make videos so I aim to make videos more regularly so you'll at least be seeing one video every week. So this is gonna be it. If you like this video then of course hit the like button subscribe to the channel if you still haven't and go ahead watch my previous video where i talked about the origin of the devil according to the islamic faith and follow me on twitter and facebook and instagram the link will be in the description until then my name is tasa trevelyan and i'll see you in the next video